We're live. Okay. So we're live. Pick it up. Still don't recognize me, right? Yes, I do now. Mm-hmm. Sorry. It doesn't upset you, does it? Huh?
I just bought a brand new one. There it is. Yeah. My God, my God. What a silly title, eh? Where am I coming from? Hi, Harry, how are you? Most of you that don't like kids running around the church. Like a church that doesn't have kids like interrupting and making a mess of things. That's a dead church. Okay. And uh, we love our kids. Um, when I say, my God, my God, um, it's not, oh God, my God, why have God forsaken me? You know, that's a very sacred thing. And we'll be talking a little about that with you know, Easter coming. Um, what I'm hitting at out there is that term that people use, well, my God wouldn't do that. Well, the God I serve, blankety blank, blankety blank. John and I were joking a little bit. You know, what about my God? It's our God. Hey, look. When Jesus taught the disciples' prayer, everybody else calls it the Lord's Prayer, but it's the disciples' prayer because he taught them, he said, I want you to pray like this. He starts it off, our Father. Okay? And this is at like all the commands. This is a command meant to do something. Okay? It's a command meant to expose false hope and lies. Okay? You can't make God in your image. And man, it's like we're hardwired to do that. Most of you are hearing that. What do you mean we're hardwired to do that? Well, let's start with the word. Okay? You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. Now look at that. It's not even just God. Okay? There are other beings. And it's quite clear in the Bible that it's not just God. There's all sorts of... What's that? Where is it? Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, Ken. Okay. Exodus 24 to 6, okay? Exodus 24 to 6. Thank you, uh, Ken. It's not just God. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Boy, and I'm not going to get into this side of it here because uh, uh, there's there's so much uh, commentary on it. You go looking for it. You can have fun with it. Punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Now, that was obvious in the Old Testament. But this overshadows it. Okay? But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. I would say the good outweighs the bad, doesn't it? Holy smoke. He does not want us making God or anything in heaven in his image, okay? Now, I've been in Asia and I saw a lot of art where Jesus is Chinese. Okay? And it's quite common. You go online, you're going to find, you know... Uh, uh, African, uh, African, uh, dark uh, colored like uh, um, um, Jesus's. Okay. Oh, we wouldn't do that in North America. Well, are you kidding me? Oh, we do it. We do it all the time. Okay. There's the most popular picture of Jesus you can buy. Blonde hair. You know, the guy looks like he's from Sweden or Finland. Never mind. You know the. You know, and I, and people got really ticked at me when I said this. Okay, but it's true. Remember 9-11 and all those pictures of those young terrorists? I said, they look just like Jesus would look like. And people got mad at me on the radio. Are you kidding me? They're all from the Middle East. That's what he looks like. He looked like when he was walking, when he was in his 30s, he looked like that. Okay? Get over it. But every culture makes God in their image. Okay? Come on, clicker, you're brand new. Don't do this to me. Okay? There's another image of Jesus in North America. He's the CEO. You know, he's the guy that's in charge. Or, he's the captain of the football team. Ra, ra, sis, boom, ba. You know, I kind of never heard Tim Tebow. I love Tim Tebow. He's a, what a great guy. I have watched that guy's life. Probably the most popular college football player in the last 20 years. Love Jesus. Never has done anything to embarrass the faith, okay? But, you know... More power to the guy. I love the guy. I'm a big Tim Tebow fan. But when I hear, and this is a North American thing, when I hear, you know, the, the, this football star or Miss America talk about how much she loves Jesus, well, it's easy for them to serve Jesus. Look at how they look. Look at their talent. Look at their abilities. You know? I want to hear the bullied 16, 17 year old teenager that's got long, oily hair and. Sits and never had a date in his life, you know. 
I want to see him get up on story time and said, you know, I thought I was junk and nobody had any time for me. But Jesus came into my life and he's a, he's a, I'm, I know who I am in Christ. I get a kick out of those kind of testimonies, you know. Because the real Jesus, not the one that they think, you know, they need to be, okay. We make Jesus in our image. Okay, we bring him down to our lifestyle. He becomes a serviceable lifestyle. And if I could say this, I want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. I trust if you forget everything else that I'm saying this afternoon about making Jesus, making God in our image, stop doing that. There is a there is a biblical, well, let's what the word says again, okay? There is a biblical God who is, come on. Yeah, there's another one. You see that one? You know what I see that one? When I step, you know what I think of which one? I think the camera is in front of a little clicker thing here. So I'll just move that over and hopefully, boy, people watching online, they're loving this. Okay. When I see that picture of Jesus, that's pretty popular, okay? And I've told you guys this before. I hate it when I get it. Some of you, nobody I can never remember in this room has ever said this. But I get it a lot when I'm doing like funerals or weddings and people are not, well, you know, the man upstairs. I hate that. Oh, I hate that. Like, you know, he's a tenant and I'm the landlord. You know what I mean? Give me a break, okay? Hey, it's good. Anyway, let's keep going. Come on. Someday I'm going to get one that works. Did I hit the wrong button again? Huh? Let's try this. No, it's not working. It's predictable as a Kia. This is God now, the biblical God. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. Okay? How do you follow a path in the sea? Well, the only way you can do it, you got to have, like, you got to be real close to the boat. I mean, if it's a great big super tanker, you know, they leave a wake that lasts for miles. But we're talking this path to see he walks on water. How do you follow that? you got to be real close. And even if you're thinking, uh, Psalm 77, 19, if you're, if you're on the shore, if you can stand, you know what happens when somebody walks in the water, when they lift their foot up, the, the water gushes in right away. The only way to see where they're going, you've got to walk in step with them. You've got to be close to them. Certainly you can't fall back to see if your God is the man upstairs. Okay? Now, what a, Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. Now, don't get insecure. Okay? Because the, the, if you look at verse 9, after that it says, uh, my ways are higher and better. And, you know, and they're, I'm, he's not, na 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 my ways are higher than you. I'm smarter than you. No, he invites, to, he invites it to come and he takes us into those higher ways. And lifts us those to higher ways. If you can get over yourself. What does it mean get over yourself? He's smarter than you are. Here's a real, you know, profound and popular line from psychiatry and psychology. Know thyself. Oh, that's deep, eh? It's a good line. It's a good line, but people go about it wrong. They stare into their navels. You know, or they like they try to find, you know, they take cert. You want to know yourself, get to know Jesus. Because he will not hide that information. He will reveal to you what you need to know. He knows you better than you know yourself. Okay? But quit trying to make him in your image. Well, he'll, he'll, he'll go along with this. Oh, whoa. Look at, I, I, I know people that read the Bible through more times than me, and I consider them spiritual giants. I, they're very, very slow to say, yeah, well, God will go along with us. I mean, if I see it in his word, and it's rock solid, yeah, I can agree. But some of those areas that we follow him, it's not always explicit. Okay? And it's a good thing for God. You're, you're higher than us. Okay? And he's, you got to remember his love. Most people that don't know God can't handle this message because this sounds stern. You guys have Jesus living in you. You already have tasted how wonderful he is, okay? What I'm trying to do is those moments when we kind of wander, those moments when, you know, the, 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 the liar comes in and his believable lies get us thinking thoughts that are, that are programmed to just derail everything. Don't give in. And part of it is bringing him down and thinking that, you know, he's going to be my little toy here. Uh, Corey Tendler, 
The older I get, the less I understand God, but the more I trust Him. Carol, I think that happens to all of us, don't you? Because we're all getting up there. And, and, you know, all my friends are getting older. I uh, I met yesterday. I had to go down to four, four, four square meeting. And who knows, they might be watching this broadcast. I met Jim Clark and Dale, Dave Thompson. Jim Clark was in the foyer of the Saskatoon Church where my son pastors, and I haven't seen him in 35 years. Apparently he's got a nephew there. He lives in Toronto. I come up to him, give a big bear hug. What in the world are you doing here? Okay? So we set up an appointment when I was in Saskatoon to visit yesterday. And we met at a, at a Tim Hortons in the middle of the rain in, in uh, Toronto. And uh, uh, um, he brought my buddy Dave Tolson. I haven't seen Dave Tolson 42 years. His wife died eight years ago. Okay? I mean, both of them going on with the Lord. Both of them loving Jesus. Okay? And, you know, we're all getting older. And I keep running into this truth. It's not Bible, but I agree with Corey Tegbook. I don't have to know all the facts to trust God and love Him and revel in how good He is. In fact, the older I get, sorry, I do understand Him less. But I don't think that's important, okay? Because He's proven to me over and over again. Here's something to think about. Jesus said this about the Pharisees and the people that He didn't like. He said, and I can't give you the verse, you're going to have to look it up because it's not in my notes. A wicked and an adulterous generation looks for a sign. But the only sign you're going to get is Jonah and the whale. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. Now, I've thought about that often. I don't want to be somebody that demands a sign. I think, because Jesus said, he said to the disciples, you're blessed for what you've seen. But then he said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen None of us in this room have seen one-tenth of the miracles that the disciples did. Okay? Jesus knows that. Okay? He knows that. He is, he is more, you know, he's way more loving than you think he is. Some of you have experienced the love of God. I'm telling you, he is way more loving than you think he is. He is way more merciful. But don't think he's going to fit into your nice little box so you make it any type of image in however connotation you can imagine, you know, that uh, that's not going to happen. Okay? Keep going here. You guys are so patient, I'm telling you. I can tell you love Jesus with all your heart. Let's go. Let's go that way and go. Look at that. Man. I wonder if I'm still too far away. Wow. Look at that. So they stand up. No. no. What a nice scene, eh? John. Down, you point it up, it doesn't. When I point it down? When I point it lower. Okay. Guys, you really need to share this video with your friends. It's going to be great. <laughs> our perception, and this is dangerous here, our perception of God is most affected by two things. Number one, our earthly fathers, or our lack of an earthly father. Okay? We talk about the father heart of God sometimes and how wonderful it is to have, but most of us, you know, have had, you know, average to decent fathers. Boy, oh boy, that's a barrier for people that have been abused. That's for a, people who had dad walk out of them when they were two years old and they never even knew him, you know? And you talk about father God filling that gap. Oh man, he's an expert at that. He's so good. So that's something you have to keep in mind. And it's, it's a wonderful thing when, 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 you, when he steps in and really becomes your father. The next perception of God is most affected by our religious tradition or our lack of religious tradition. Okay? And unfortunately, in North America, most people see God as a judge instead of a father. You know? Be sure your sins will find you out. I think the first, next to John 3.16, I think that's the first verse I ever like heard. We get drummed that in children's church, you know. And somebody said that rules in the church were rules in the church. People came up with rules that you know so that the parents could get the bed early, you know, like so the kids wouldn't be ripping the place apart. You know, there's there's a lot of truth to that. Pharisees, to a great degree, add stuff to the law that Jesus never intended. You know, they make the way harder than Jesus does. Well, that spirit is very alive in churches, and a lot of you, you know, a lot of us were exposed to that. Well, God's not like that. When I hold it down? Oh yeah, sure. I'll hold it down. There we go. 
Okay, might be on something. First John 3, 1 to 3. Look at this. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. That word lavish is so good. You don't use that very much, do you? Lavish is good, though. You know, just, just, just overload you, okay? See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is, and not like somebody told us He was. And not like we think He is. Okay? All who have this hope in Him, look at this. This is powerful here. I had noticed this. I've read the Bible through a lot of times here. All who have this hope in Him purify themselves. This is a way to moral purity. To have your hope in the biblical Christ. Hope in the true God purifies. Again, not someone's good perception of Him. God has no grandsons, by the way. We're granddaughters. You've got to know Him as a child yourself. Okay? We open up our heart to Him, and He is faithful to come in. Hold it down. He said, hold it down. And it does it. There we go. Proverbs 22 and 1. A good day is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Now think about that scripture there. A good day is better than great riches. And Jesus, when he was with the disciples, he flogged the truth. Use my name. Pray in my name. Nobody's got a more powerful name than that. Okay. One of the most profound things I ever uh, experienced was when I was in uh, uh, Malaysia. And uh, the pastors there, you know, there are areas of Malaysia that um, I've never heard the gospel. And every once in a while they were run into um, shamans, Hindu shamans, okay? And I don't know if I've ever shared this story with you, but um, um, man, it, it affected me. So you see, yeah, we go in there. And these people have never heard about Jesus. They don't know who we are. And this happened more than once. But the spirits that are in the shamans, they're, you know, they're demon possessed. They know who Jesus is. And they've actually said, why have you come to torment us? This is our territory. Leave us alone. And they will report back that they can silence these shamans just with the name of Jesus Christ. Well, the Bible says that in James. Okay? Philippians. In Philippians to James 1, okay? The... The, 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 the demons tremble at the sound of this name. Okay? Why? Because this is the biblical Jesus. And I told the story of the seven sons of Sceva. I think it's Acts 17. Okay? My, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. You know? They're out casting demons. In the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Come out. And they were successful. Well, they come across one that I know Paul. I know Jesus. Who are you? And this one demon beats them all about. All seven of them are so bad that they run away naked and bleeding. Okay? Some of you are giggling. <laughs> I do too. Okay? <laughs> hey, it's a great story. You know why? Better know the real Jesus. Better have a first hand, and he invites us to that. He's not playing hide and seek. Although the word says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Okay? It is worth the pursuit. In fact, I would suggest that not just on a single you know, moment, a lifelike pursuit. I, I don't preach... Um, Psychology, okay, but um, I heard this line once, and I've studied people, and I kind of agree with it. It's not as authoritative as Bible, but take it for what it's worth. Um, there's a, a realm of thought in psychology that says what we think of ourselves, our self-image is based on whoever loves us the most. Whoever loves us the most, whatever that person thinks of us, that's usually what we think of ourselves. So, Heather is the person that loves me the most. What she thinks of me, I probably think of myself. Okay? Which is very sober. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's very honest. It's very kind, but she sees right through me. Okay? If you've got a friend or whatever. Now, what are the possibilities when you bring this thought into your, the realm of Christ? If you really love Jesus more than anybody else in your life, what Jesus thinks of you is going to be what you think of yourself. And if you ever tap into how much God loves you, boy, you will be fearless. Fearless in your 
desire to love people that everybody else is afraid of. You will be fearless to believe. You will be fearless to tithe. You will be fearless to make friends with people that probably have wronged you. And to not give up. God is love. That's his greatest attribute. He's got all kinds of other great attributes. But the overreaching and most powerful one is his love. That's the image. That's the true image of God. And there's generations that have been lost to a God made in church leaders' image that was a legalistic, judgmental God. Sure, he makes the call. Sure, he decides. But you're not getting a proper image of God if you are not understanding how much he loves first. Because it says in 1 John 4, God in several places, God is love. If he's anything, he's love. So you're probably getting a warped perspective of who he is if you don't understand that love thing first, because that's priority. That's top. That's top billing. Okay? True God. The true God. He loves and encourages. There's a weird slide here. Christianity's been going for 2,000 years. Okay? Of course, it's God's roots of Judaism that goes back 5,000 years, but the, the message of the redemptive cross and the resurrection is about 2,000 years ago. Hinduism's been going for about 2,600 years. Today, 83% of Christians who follow Christ and the nations they live in, 83% of followers of Christ live above the poverty line. 70% of Hindus live below the poverty line. Now, some say, cynics would say, that's a geographic thing. And what about imperialism and all that? Well, say whatever you want to say, okay? When the gospel and the true image of God and people know God, when a society turns to God and when they are serving God, that society is lifted. Proverbs says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to, reproach to any people. And we've got entire nations that have lived in darkness for thousands of years. Why? Because there's other gods. And they have no intention on lifting their people. Okay? None whatsoever. That's why there's only one true God. One true God. And we better get to know Him for who He is. Okay? Because we've got a real good liar who's been made powerless by this one mighty God. But boy, He tells believable lies. And especially in a culture where there's so many distractions in North America, He seems to do quite well at sidetracking people and discouraging people. Your perception, your image of God affects your self-image. Now, there's wrong images of God. Very wrong images of God. Let's get some pictures up here to help. If our goofy little clicker thing will work. Maybe if I move it closer, I'm going to move it down. Point is at the computer. Huh? Oh. Wow. Ken, you're scaring people. <laughs> some people have this image of God, you know? I saw, I got to so I, I saw a funny meme. Jesus is standing at the door. You know the picture of him knocking at the door? I'm standing at the door and knock, let me in so I don't have to do what I'm going to do to you. <laughs> you can laugh at that because it's a total warped perception of Jesus. It's coming from a perception that all creation is doomed. All creation is doomed. They live in darkness. They have no hope. But somebody's made it possible. That's not going to happen. And that wasn't Jesus' fault. He's the Savior. Okay? He's the Redeemer. He's the one that steps in and says, uh-uh, you're not touching my kids. I've already paid the price for them. Come on board. Okay? But some people think he's the Grim Reaper. He's the harbinger of death. You know? Every you know what is this? Every disaster. Act of God. <laughs> 28,000 people died in an act of God. Man, a lot. You would get a, a pretty lousy reputation after that. that. You think that doesn't go into people's subconscious? It does. Acts 2.21. This is the real God. Acts 2.21. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, yeah, but you're this, this. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah, but you, you've done this. Yet. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay? We're all who Every wickedness will be punished. But those who know the real God 
They find out about love like they never knew before. They find out about mercy. They find out about forgiveness. They find out about hope. Now, how many saw this the last couple weeks? Okay. Got that? That's pretty, you know, there's, there's a lot of people in Ottawa that would agree with that. I call this God, and I stole the term from a preacher. How many heard Leonard Ravenhill? Died about five years ago. This guy rocks, man. Oh, my goodness. This guy would step into churches and people would tremble, man. <laughs> if ever where there was a preacher in the 20s, well, David Wilkerson was like him, too. I mean, David Wilkerson and Leonard Ray Ravenhill, they lived in Tyler, Texas. They were working in ministries together. They were contemporaries, okay? Leonard Ravenhill was a little bit older than David Wilkerson, but they died about the same time. Wilkerson killed in a car crash. Leonard Ravenhill, you know, died of 85, old age, whatever. This guy preached with fire, and I remember coming across this little piece here. He calls this the mush god, okay? You've got to hear this. This thing, I'm telling you, this may be the most popular wrong concept of God. Here we go. The mush god. The mush god has been known to appear to billionaires on golf courses. He appears to politicians at ribbon-cutting ceremonies. And a clergyman speaking the invocation on national TV at either Democratic or, national or Republican conventions. The mush god's presence is felt during Brotherhood Week and when Rotarians come together. God of the Rotary, God of the Optimist Club, protector of the buddy system, the mush god is the lord of secular ritual, of the necessary but hypocritical forms and formalities that hush the divisive and the derisive. The mush god is a serviceable god whose laws are chiseled on tablets whose laws are not written on, tab uh, written on tablets, but written on sand, open to amendment, qualifications, and erasure. This is a God that will compromise with you, make allowances, and declare all wars holy, and all pieces hallowed. The Mush God has no theology to speak of, being the cream of weak divinity. The Mush God has no particular credo, no tenets of faith, nothing that would make it difficult for believer and non-believer alike to lower one's head when the temporary chairman tells us the Reverend Rabbi Father Mufti or so-and-so will lead us in an innocuous, harmless prayer. For this God of public occasions is not a jealous God. You can even invoke him to start a hooker's convention and he or she will not be offended. Sometimes called the Santa Claus God too, you know. Better watch out, better watch out, better not cry. But everybody gets gifts, always, you know. Find a way. Wrong concept. That's a got image made in somebody's uh, 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 image made in somebody's mind. Cosmic cop. A lot of us can relate to that. God's got a baseball bat ready to throttle you whenever you do something wrong. I don't know what's with the Catholic Church. I mean, come on, you know. Okay, you gotta jump through these hoops, say Mary's name fifty-four times, and uh, you know, uh, fast two days and everything will be okay. What about the blood of Christ? Jesus died once for all, okay? For all sins. This concept of God produces paranoia. How are you going to get to know somebody who's holding a baseball bat right in throttle every time you do something wrong? And then you got the devil. The word devil is, is Greek for accuser. He's always telling you you never measure up, you know? He said, well, you got to pack this in, man. This isn't for you. You're never going to cut it. Forgiveness is nowhere with this cosmic cop. You reap what you sow. Be sure your sins will find out, find you out. All sorts of, all sorts of wrong concepts of God, and these wrong concepts of God is because people build God in their own image. The best picture of God we have is the biblical Jesus. Sometimes it can be hard to find. Why? Because we're selfish. Because we serve Jesus with an agenda. Um. Because we want our way. Hey, there's lots of scriptures that attract us that, for instance, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Hey, I want a piece of that. <laughs> Here's my list. You know. There's a lot of wonderful promises. You know, don't think about it. Don't lean on your own understanding. Follow him. Don't direct your path. Well, I have my path directed because, you know, we've got a path we want to walk. It'll take a while for you to learn. Okay? Let him have his way. Let him have his way. He can be, he's smarter than you. He will lead you to, to still waters, to greener pastures. And even if you're walking, and some of you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
Okay, you have it right there. Right there. That's the biblical God. We are, and I hope you can handle this. I hope you'll handle this in humility. We are the best image of God. When we're walking with God, when we're living for Him and not living for ourselves, God shines through us. It is the, mo it is the most attractive and irresistible representation of God that anybody will ever find. You know? You may have heard it expressed by people who have never really known God. You know, I'm not really into what those people believe, but boy, they got something. And I want it. They may not even say that, but there's a desire there. Okay? And the devil will beat you up and remind you of how imperfect you are. I'm telling you, if you're following Jesus, you can't hide it. Okay? And people will be touched. Not because you got it together, but because the almighty, real, biblical God that you haven't made in an image, you just trust Him and rely on Him and, 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 and trust Him to lead you. He is leading you. And He is sh shining through. Now, next week, we get to the commandment that um, um, don't take my name in vain. And I'm going to give you some stuff there that you've never heard before, okay? But I want us to stand, because i got a bit of a, a precursor for next week, okay? Where is it here? Okay? This is kind of get us the leader step. And I hope that, that the verses come quick enough so I can read you. If you know this song, sing it nice and loud. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, to get you thinking about next week and what's coming. The name of Jesus is so sweet. I love his praises to repeat. He makes my joy full and complete. The precious name of Jesus. Jesus, oh how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim. His worthy grace forever. I love the name of him whose heart knows all my griefs and bears a part. Who bids all anxious fears depart. I love the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh how sweet the name. Jesus every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim His worthy praise forever. The name I fondly love to hear, it never fails my heart to cheer. Its music drives the falling tear. Exalt the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim His worthy grace. Sweet the name I love so well. Oh, let its praises ever swell. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh, how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim. It's worthy praise. God, we receive the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives right now. Lord, for what you're going to lead us into this week, God. you got the answers, Lord God, for difficult people. God, you're going to flow through us, Lord. So we're going to know what not to say and how to love. Lord, you've got love, Lord, that you can disperse within us right now. That, Lord, we'll be able to love beyond our capabilities. 
God, you've got faith to distribute right now, Lord God, but we're able to believe beyond our abilities. Lord, your word in Jeremiah says, Lord God, some of us are stressed out by how we stray. And Lord, how we just can't get it together. Lord, in Jeremiah, you say, Lord, Lord, you can lock us into loving you that it's impossible for us to turn from you. There's a lot of us that want that in our lives, Lord God. And the ones that don't, God, you are able to reveal how much you love us to them so they're not afraid of that. Lord God, perfect love drives out fear. We need that perfect love. Because too many people are bound in fear. And Lord, we're coming in contact with people who are bound in fear all the time. And your perfect love can set them free, God. So grant us your anointing. Grant us your Holy Spirit. Grant us everything we need to go out, God, today. And Wednesday night and Thursday night. And all those wonderful appointments we're going to have during the week, Lord God. The light of Christ, Lord God, is with us. Lord God, to transform everybody we come in contact with. Fill us with your spirit and power to make it so. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Have a coffee. Go visit Denise. Denise's last name is Gibo, G-U-I-B-E-A-U-L-T, to get into the hospital. G-U-I-B-E-A-U-L-T. And she's having mom for. Mom for. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. When you...